Well, I think the the regular season probably uh, told the story. I mean, four really close games, a couple overtime games, uh, not a lot of room physical. I, I think that's going to be the story of the the series. And, and uh, you know, how do you match up? I mean, the playoffs are always a new season. <clears throat> I think you can learn from the tape and, and what you know about the teams. But, um, you know, it, it's a different season and you can't hang your hat on any of the things that have either gone well or poorly during the regular season against teams in these situations. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it, when you're in the regular season, you're, you're trying to keep your own team on track. You're, you're spending, you know, probably 10% of your time on what the other teams are doing. Um, but, you know, when you get a seven game series, you can really dial in on a team and its tendencies and analytics and consistencies and things like that. That's, uh, you know, for me, it's the most enjoyable part of, of the job. Yeah. <clears throat> well, two totally different players, right? I mean, Kaprasov is, uh, the first thing I think about is power. And, you know, he's got that solid base. He's never never off his feet. Uh, so strong. Uh, both have lethal shots. I think, uh, obviously, Robo's more rangy and, and uses his, his long arms and his reach and some of those things uh, a little bit more, or, or Kaprasov's more of that power through you type game. Uh, but both both very effective offensive players and both guys that, they both have that goal scorer's knack where, you know, they don't need a lot of room to, to find a hole and uh, they don't need a lot of space to get a shot off. And, uh, you know, they're both, both dangerous guys. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you, you start getting game planned around, you start getting more attention, you start getting, you know, one and two defensemen instead of four or five and six defensemen out against you every night. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the opposing team starts studying your, your offensive tendencies and they try and take that stuff away. So that's what great players do. You know, they, they, they continue to evolve and, and work through that. And, you know, the, the really, really good players are the ones that can continue to produce even with that attention. What do you think is an underrated part of Jason Robertson's play away from um, You know what? I think his uh, puck decisions. I think um, I've been really impressed with, you know, he has a conscience with the puck um, where he's not afraid to dump it out or dump it in. You know, if there's nothing there, he's he's a smart player and he recognizes opportunity to create offense. Um, but he also, you know, has a conscience where, you know, he can live to fight another day. If there's nothing there, he's he's willing to stick it in and go and forecheck or, or do some of that heavy lifting, you know, that you ask other guys to do. So, you know, that, that's what I've been most impressed with. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it depends if that's what you want to do, Bruce. You know, I, I don't think we're looking to surprise anyone with a trick play or, or do something differently. You know, we've had success all year based on a foundation with all our systems, five on five, PK, PP. And we have a strong belief that, you know, if we if we do those foundational things right, um, you know, it doesn't matter what the other group's doing, you know, so. I don't think we're looking to surprise anyone. We're just, you know, if anything, we want to surprise them with how consist consistent our special teams are in the playoffs after having a great regular season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, he he is what everyone's read about him. 
you know, great teammate, great energy, great in the room. Um, and, and he's a great goalie. And, and the thing that gets lost sometimes in, in some of those stories is how competitive he is. He's an ultra competitive guy um, that wants to play every night and wants to be out there and make a difference. Um, you know, and the other guys had an exceptional season. I mean, you know, you, you put his numbers up against anybody in the league and, and, uh, and he's right there and it wasn't a small sample size, you know, he played a lot of games. So, you know, that, that's a strength of their team. They're defending and they're, they're elite goaltending. I don't think I have to say anything. I think when you, you meet Wyatt, you spend time with him. You know, this guy's he, he's unflappable. He's mature beyond his years. He's taken a junior team deep uh, in the playoffs. He's won an, a gold medal at the under-18s. Um, and he lives with Joe Pavelski. So Joe Joe does all the, the talking that uh, that needs to be done with, uh, with Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I think as a coach, you know, you, you can set the table a little bit for that with how you manage situations. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I was in San Jose. We were playing St. Louis in the conference final. You guys probably remember this play, but we, it was game, I think it was game one, two, something like that. It was early in the series. We're in St. Louis, and, and we go to overtime, and we, we actually hand pass a, a puck to Eric Carlson. Clear hand pass. Ends up in the net. The referees miss it, and it, and it stood because it wasn't reviewable. So, you know, we win a game we shouldn't win. And I remember, you know, watching Craig Berube's, how he handled that situation. If he, you know, if he had gone off the rails, maybe his team goes off the rails, he, he was – he was so consistent and so calm in his messaging about it and getting ready for the next play and the next game and not to dwell on it that, uh, you know, his team, I thought, uh, worked off his reaction. And, you know, they ended up beating us and winning the Stanley Cup against Boston that year. But I thought it was a key, key moment. So, I mean, I think those are situations where you, you, your your coach can have a say, but you know, that, that attitude comes from your dressing room, your captains. And Jamie Ben's been on long runs. Joe Pavelski's been on long runs. Uh, you know, we've got guys in there. That, Tyler Sagan's won a Stanley Cup. So, you know, th those guys will set that tone. As a coach, it seems like you're selling into leaning into some of the I'm just trying to manage uh, his bank account, make sure he's not buying a, uh, a couple hundred tickets every game there. <laughs> I talked to him about that this morning. I mean, you, at some point you can't buy everyone in Minnesota a ticket to come watch you play. So, um, you know, what? He's, uh, he's excited, obviously. You know, I think for anyone coming home like that, it's a, a dream come true. Uh, but again, like Wyatt, you, you don't have – you know, there's guys you, you 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 have to spend time with on things like that, and and Jake's so mature beyond his years that it really, you know, not not even hasn't even crossed my radar. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, not not just him, the entire team. I mean, we talk about that going into the playoffs is eliminating distractions. You know, it's it's there's a lot of distractions this time of year, and the deeper you go, the more the more of them you have. More people want to come watch you play. More people want to come into town and visit. All those things. So you know, we we've got a, you know, the the great thing about our group, and I keep hearkening back to it, is is just you know we have great leadership in there, and those guys those guys get it. They understand. You know, you don't need to say it more than once. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's a good question. You know what? I just, I mean, it, 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 uh, like anything, it was it wasn't smooth all the way through, um, but um, I never, I I never found anyone in that room. Uh, or or the group at any moment 
uh, you know, not wanting or not believing in what we were trying to do. You know, maybe it wasn't done perfectly or, or seamlessly. Maybe they hadn't, uh, you know, yet got it to the point where they were doing it without thinking about it. You know, there was mistakes made, but, um, you know, it was, they never questioned the, the, the principles of what we were trying to do. And I think that's probably the biggest thing. And again, you know, I think Joe Pavelski helps immensely in that because, you know, he, he's, he's the guy in the room that's, you know, that's basically uh, uh, our credibility, you know, for, for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not concerned at all about our team being pushed out of a, a game physically. You know, I think we're built that way. We're a big, heavy, hard team. So you know, I haven't. I haven't seen a team yet that that has pushed us out physically. Um, but you know, playoffs is whistle to whistle, and uh, you know, there's really no room to get involved in the extracurricular stuff. Yeah. Well, I think video is the same. I mean, you know, when I when I coached my first playoff game ten years ago, you know, except it's a lot quicker. I mean, we would hunker down for for days and and watch tape and break it all down. You know, now um, you're provided with that. If you want, you know, Minnesota's last fifty four checks or fifty chances, you you can get that at a. At, at your fingertips so you know but the, but the process the, the video is the same you have to work through that and get a picture you know the analytics is where it's changed you know because it's allowed you to really dial in on uh, what teams are really good at what they're really uh, poor at and you might be able to expose and 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 you know that that's something you know there's always surprises in those reports for me you know of areas that you can either exploit or or have to be careful of.